statement. Oh, no, 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 that's working on the job. Yeah. Yeah. Just we'll have a word later. If I knock that church down, I can put it there. Let's get something straight. No, 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 you can't do that. Let's get something straight. We're going to build a house. I did the roof. No, no, no. I did the roof. Then forget it. I'd forget about it. When I did the roof, I'd do the roof. We can either stay as a group or we can wander. Um, and uh, but if we go straight there, then you can put your bags and coats down, and then uh, we'll explore from there. <laughs> Did you catch that, dear? We're going to go straight to the room upstairs. All right. Can you shout in a bit louder? It's a Has anybody got any lozenges? Because you'll need them. <laughs> Just send a memo. Just go before he gets <laughs> to eat in here at two o'clock sandwiches and cake and juice and water but until then and after then you're free to come and go so don't feel like you have to stay in here <laughs> you can explore the ground floor of the court and the basement um, and then for those of you that want to have a look upstairs we're going to go up at three o'clock after lunch and everything um, we'll have a, a little look upstairs so don't feel like you have to stay in here all day you're welcome to leave bags and coats um, and for anyone who wants to give an interview to Richard on the behind the camera there, um, he's happy to have people come up, like go into a quiet corner and talk one on one if you want to tell him about your time at Croom and so on. I'm um, first. <laughs> and that'll be after lunch. <laughs> I come here 
in 19, early, early 60s, about 16, end of 60, end of 60, 1960 to 62. And uh, I, know, I, I used to go home every other weekend. My old man used to come and fetch me. And, uh, you know, I, I couldn't say it wasn't a good time, I ain't saying it was a bad time. It's one of those things that you had to come, all I come here for, because I couldn't read and write very well. And then I went at the Bedford Court, and I was there a fortnight. And uh, the old man pulled me out of there because it wasn't a good school. I don't think it was the sort of school that I wanted to stay at in those days. But, you know, it never done me no harm. It alerted me to stand on my own two feet when I was here. This, this room, what we're studying now, this was like a bathroom where you used to have a wash and shower there through there where they, where they used to keep all the new clothes. You know, it, it's fair enough, it's one of those things. And that's all I can say, roughly. Albert, I came about 1952. It was, um, I didn't know any different because I'd already come from a home and I soon settled in and got to know everything what was going on around the place. And it, I did love it here, they were very strict, but I did love it. My number was 55. Everything was numbered but you, from your clothes to your garters to your boots and socks. It, it was very sad when I did have to leave when I was 13 to go to Bedford Court. But I did love it here and I, I'll always say thank you to the nuns for looking after me and everything else. And I, I did love it here. Okay. Well, um... I arrived here in 1971. I came from London. For the first, I say for the first year, it was quite hard for me to get used to the actual uh, school. But uh, after that, it became easier. Um, I did a lot of sport. I played for 
the school team and I really enjoyed myself uh, playing for the team. We used to play all over, I suppose, we used to play a lot, a lot in Birmingham as well against other schools. Um, I think one of the fondest moments were when we all went to the Mul Malvern Hills and it was great. It was a fantastic place to go and visit. Um, also, I used to read uh, on Sundays, I used to read in the church, which was, uh, which was quite nice. But um, I had quite a lot of uh, great memories here. We did quite a few things as well, especially the summer. We had sports day. We used to go for long walks as well. We also used to, they had quite a few bikes, so we used to go uh, riding as well, and that was great. Um, the nuns were quite strict. The food wasn't too good, but I think towards the end it was getting better. That's it, really. I came here when I was nine, and uh, the reason I came here, as far as I can understand, uh, my mother had um, a drink problem, uh, also going through the change, and my brother and I landed up here, which I thoroughly enjoyed, as such. Um, my brother hated it. And of course, um, from here, we went to Bestwood, Bestwood Court. There, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, up to the usual mischief, as usual. The two friends of mine that were there, the Jim, Jimmy Quinn, Billy Quinn, and a few others. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, I arrived at Croom um, in 1969. Um, although I only spent an actual year here, um, I was backwards and forwards from Croom because my younger brother was here. And uh, I've never met, I had a pretty good time. Um, obviously, being a naughty child at times, you did get um, sorted, but the majority of the time, I would say, was actually very good. Um, it's nice to see some of the old lads and certainly the crowd that we have today. Um, a lot of from Bestford, some came here in the early 50s, um, and it, it is good to see them and find out what their experiences are like. Um, and it's always nice to keep in touch. Too. Hello, my name's Bill Donovan. I came to the school way back in the very first time in 1950. This was a time when we first moved to this school and before that we were uh, a school at, at a place called Sanborn near Redditch and I was there for just six months and then it was holiday time and we were went to a camp in Wales and after about five or six weeks we left there and we didn't even know that we were coming to a new school until we came down the driveway here in the coaches and they said this is your new school, Croom Court, St. Joseph's Croom Court. When I saw the building, I was in awe of the place. I just thought this is the most magnificent building I have ever seen. And I thought, this is now my new school where I will be to, for the next four or five years. And I remember we got out of the coaches and they said, right, You'll have a little time to look round and then we'll go and take you to the refectories so you can have something to eat. But when I came here, I said, oh, I just love them. I just wanted to run wild and look and just take it all in. It was wonderful. I enjoyed the wonderful view of the church on the hill and everything about it. And it's rather ironic that when I first came here, they took us up to where our dormitories were. And this room you are in now, was the first room that I had my dormitory. As you say, it looks out to the church at the top there on the hill. And my bedroom was right by the door there, just behind the door. 
So this is this room in particular has got a special meaning for me. And uh, it was just the, just just a wonderful place, and I thought I'm going to really enjoy this place, and I did, and I've always loved this place. And when I realised that over years that the National Trust were taking over, I was so thrilled because it meant that I was able to come back and have a look at this wonderful place. And here we are today. Uh, it's a school, school reunion, meeting up with a few of my old school pals and others since I was here. And we've got so many things to remember. And it's just wonderful. Anyway, there's that. How's that? Michael Daugherty. I came here in 1963. I remember my boat number was 112 and, and I remember downstairs, just up bottom of the stairs, there were had two cages with, with two dogs in, which the Mother Superior had. It was quite an experience being as a boarder. What about the first time when you saw the building? When I saw the building, it was on the coaches coming on site. I was surprised to see him. I was a bit worried to begin with it because it just be just arrived on my own with other boys as well. Hi, I'm Dawn Spence Kelly. Um, I started in Bessford Court in 1984. I was 11 at the time. Um, on my first visit there, I visited with my parents and it was just stunning. I just didn't think that I would ever sort of live there kind of thing. But um, once I moved in, it quickly became my home, um, a place where I actually belonged. When I first moved into Bessford, I went up to um, St. Joseph's, which was a hostel. And I shared a dormitory with th three other girls. And next door to us was four boys. And it was um, ran by Sister Ursula and Sister Anne and Sister Colin Barnes, where I stayed for a couple of years. And then we, I went to the main, to the main building which was no longer dormitories, it was individual bedrooms. I was in a greenhouse and there was only one year out of the whole years that I was there, because I was there from 11 to 16, out of the whole years that I was there, we only won sports day once <laughs> out of all of that time. St Andrews and Bessemer Court was the girls' um, dormitories, yes. I love swimming. Um, I did um, uh, life-saving with, um, I can't remember the teacher's name though, Mrs. Headlands, Sheila Headlands. I really enjoyed and I um, got all of my certificates for that, which was really good. I also did a lot of athletics there and I did um, badminton and I did um, Duke of Edinburgh. We did Duke of Edinburgh and, and um, finding you all on Facebook was massive because I've been looking for a long time for anybody to get in contact with from Bessford Court and then I found Croom Court on, Be on the internet on Facebook and found an awful lot of new friends so yes a lot of people in the same situation that I was in. Oh, well, we just speak Are you on me? Just Hi. typical. My name is Patrick Keogh. 
I came to Croom in 1963 and I moved from Croom up to Bedford Court around about 1966 or 7. I'm Vincent Conlon. I came here under the name Vincent Hanley. <laughs> I arrived in 1966, uh, spent two and a half years here, then went on to Bestford, left there in 1971 at the age of 15. And uh, I personally think I was very lucky to be here. Uh, one of the things that Patrick Cullen told you <coughs> is the fact that uh, he was the head boy at the time and his job was to look after the new boys. And he took, he took pretty, good, pretty good care of people. I was the boss. You were the boss, yeah. Outside mother, sister Claire, you were the boss. Yes. yes. Now, while we've got a moment, you've got Alice with us. Alice was with the National Trust. Without Alice and Michael Smith, this reunion we do wouldn't happen. Was it just... No, it wasn't knowledge. It was about giving a day for the ex-pupils. Um, so it was really, we're the host and we'll we'll do whatever's best. We started off small four years ago um, and it's grown as we've seen today uh, with a record 45 people coming along so um, if it's going to grow again we might have to think about doing something even bigger and better next year. Yeah. Um, but the idea of the day as far as I'm concerned is for ex-pupils to um, talk to other ex-pupils um, to have a look around the building because there isn't always the opportunity <coughs> to look at the upper floors and uh, next year hopefully we'll be able to go in the Red Wing as well. So each year we'll try and do something bigger, better and gain more photos, knowledge, experience and, and more pupils. Um, so that's, that's what it's all about as far as I'm concerned okay. really. I mean it goes without saying, right, we, you know, you can't underestimate National Trust because how good of organisation they are. From the time we started the reunions, National Trust has been absolutely fantastic, and Alice in particular, aren't you? She's been absolutely, she's been yeah. absolutely a godsend. She's always welcomed us, and, and National Trust has always welcomed, welcomed us back to school, uh, well, to crew. Um, but Alice, Mel, uh, Melanie, Michael, and they? Mike absolutely welcomed with open arms. Without them, we couldn't do it. Without them, we could not. Do it. like to do now is all the pupils that was here if you could stay where you are all the families just disappear kids in this school, out of the 145 kids, 45 of them got told to stand in the line and strip down to their underpants. <laughs> yes. And we all wanted to know why, and guess why, because people were doing naughty things in the school, <laughs> and they didn't like it. 
So they slapped us on bare bum. <laughs> and the kid in front of me couldn't take any more. So I said to him, if they got any more to give to him, give it to me. And they did. And she made sure I wasn't going to sit on my bum. Hey!